Hi all, welcome to the SceneWise analysis of Act 4, Scene 5 as we attempt a textual analysis of the play Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Act 4, Scene 5 is a fairly long scene of around 216 lines. The scene opens with Queen Gaithrude, Horatio and a gentleman in the court and later followed by Ophelia, King Claudius and Laetus. The scene is by all means one of the most touching and emotionally charged scenes of the play since it is so much filled with feelings of pathos caused by the mentally unstable Ophelia and remorseful Gaithrude and Laetus in a fiery temperament. It is also an informative scene as it informs about the death of Ophelia by drowning. The scene reveals about the speedy return of Laetus from France for avenging his father's death. The scene is unique for certain reasons since we meet Horatio after Act 3, Scene 2 in the scene and Laetus after Act 1, Scene 2 here. The scene 5 opens as an informative scene as the gentleman informs Queen Gaithrood about Ophelia's request for a meeting with her, which is indeed a bold move by Ophelia. The gentleman informs the Queen about Ophelia's unhinged state of mind, which he feels has been caused by some great misfortune that has happened to her, of which she is dimly conscious of now. I quote the lines uttered by the gentleman. She speaks much of her father, says she hears. There is tricks in the world. Ophelia's mental agony caused by the irrepressible losses whose worth my she reckons now is similar to the mental struggle of Lady Macbeth who pours out her untold secrets in the famous sleepwalking scene in the play Macbeth. At this juncture, the presence of Horatio and his only words uttered at the court is noteworthy. As he says, It were good she was spoken with, for she may strew dangerous conjectures in ill-breeding minds. In fact, it is these words of advice which prompts the Queen to summon Ophelia to the court since she wants to avoid a possible outbreak of controversy against the royal family that can taint its reputation and kingship. The aside uttered by Queen Gaithrude discloses her feeling of guilt as she is apprehensive of more tragic events to follow the present one. I quote Queen Gaithrude's aside To my sick soul, as sins true nature is, each toy seems prologue to some great MS. So full of artless jealousy is guilt, it spills itself in fearing to be spilt. Her words are brimming with dramatic irony as hereafter her domestic life is about to undergo the worst misfortune. Uh, meanwhile, Ophelia comes in and her prattles are reminiscent of popular ballads which are a conglomeration of thoughts impregnate with expressions of her brooding mind torn by two severe losses of her life. The loss of Hamlet, which she had expressed so well in her soliloquy in Act 3, Scene 1, and the death of her father. In fact, Ophelia's words reveal a series of emotions she experienced. She reveals the confusion of her lover while choosing an appropriate match. Her agony caused by the untimely death of her father. Her excitement to meet her Valentine on Valentine's Day. And of course, her sorrow for not having offered her father an appropriate burial and lastly, 
her belief that her brother Laetus shall inquire about it very soon. In the end, she takes leave by saying good night and thanking the queen for her good counsel. King Claudius, who happens to listen to her utterances, is able to foresee danger and cautions Horatio to keep her under close watch. As Horatio leaves with Ophelia, Claudius speaks to Gaithrod about the extent of misery endured by Ophelia within a short span of time as he describes first her father slain, next your son gone. King Claudius also discusses about the information about the return of Lytus from France and his brooding over the unnatural death of his father and the innumerable whispers about the manner his father met with his death which is attributed to Claudius. Suddenly amidst violent eruptions, the gentleman reports about a political outbreak against the misrule of Claudius as Lytus accompanied by an outrageous mob who hail him as the next king reach the palace. As Lytus storms in, he asks for the king. The initial expression of Lytus is saturated with anger, contempt and suspicion as he addresses him. O thou vile king, give me my father. He utters the lines that that drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard cries cuckled to my father. These lines state the reason for revenging his father's death. Here, Lattus is reminded of the responsibility of a son and the importance of avenging his father's death. Immediately, Queen Gaithrod attempts to calm him as King Claudius allows him to express his grievances to him. Lytus states that he is aggrieved by the murder of his father, but he will be discreet in his expression of vengeance as it will be poured only on his foes and not friends. He promises to be like the kind-hearted pelican to those who are in friendly terms with him. Exactly then they hear loud noise as the mad Ophelia enters the court for the second time. The weird presence of Ophelia that flares up revengeful thoughts in Lytus is similar to the appearance of the ghost of King Hamlet to spur similar feelings in Hamlet in Act 1. Uh, Ophelia is visibly unhinged and she is seen distributing flowers such as rosemary which is a symbol of remembrance and pansy, a symbol of grief, which makes Lytus utters very important lines. Hadst thou thy wits and didst persuade revenge, it could not move thus. The words of Lytus reflect his revengeful fury, aggravated by the sight of mad Ophelia. King Claudius tries to win the trust of Lytus in him by pledging his unconditional favour for him as he asks him to seek advice from his wisest friends about the trustworthiness and innocence of King Claudius in this regard. And if proved wrong, he pledges his readiness to abdicate his crown and his entailments. Lytus therefore agrees with the proposal of the king and requests the king to reveal him the circumstances that led to his father's death. He is eager to know the reasons for the hasty, secret burial that was devoid of an honourable and ceremonial burial and a proper memorial. The turbulent scene closes as the king promises to satisfy all his queries in their fullest and request him to follow him.
Hi, welcome to the scene wise analysis of Act 4, Scene 6 of the play Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. The Act 4, Scene 6 is a very short scene of around 31 lines. As the scene opens, we meet Horatio, a servant, and some sailors. In fact, the scene opens with a servant summoning a sailor who intends to deliver a letter to Horatio. The sailor tells Horatio that uh, the letter is entrusted to him by the ambassador who recently set sail to England who wants it to be delivered to Horatio. The letters tell him about how Hamlet's ship was attacked by pirates and the letter also tells Horatio about how Hamlet is being treated kindly by the pirates in return for his promises to do good for them. He concludes this message expressing his eagerness to express more about his eventful journey to England as they meet soon as he returns to Denmark. Horatio leads the sailor to the king and later Horatio warns him to be led to meet Hamlet. The scene therefore is a fusion of happy and sorrowful tidings as it reveals the miraculous escape made by Hamlet from the pirates' captivity by an act of providence. Therefore, the scene is in fact releasing Hamlet from the circle of delay and inaction as it also is revealing how the plans of Claudius is getting jeopardized as Hamlet returns to Denmark. The scene therefore foreshadows tragic and woeful sequences. As we know, all is not well in the state of Denmark. Now that awaits Hamlet.